have that clear vision. It doesn't matter how big it is. It doesn't matter how scary it seems. It, it doesn't matter if nobody else understands it. That is the most important thing. When I started to hone in and understand that I have the ability to attract, create, and turn a consciously intended idea and vision into a reality, that's when things started to change because I stepped back from things and said, what do I want to create? What do I want to experience? If you had access right now to anything and everything that your heart desires, what would that be? I study the patterns of the universe. That's the brain. Virtual, virtual, virtual mind. Talking about your life. Fundamental principles. Philosophy. What is and what is not true. Those who know themselves. Being better every single day. Hello there, you beautiful people, and welcome to another episode of the Think Grow podcast, where personal development meets real life. I'm your host, Ruben Chavez. I'm also the founder of the Think Grow Prosper brand and website, thinkgrowprosper.com. And it is my job in this show to explore a variety of topics with thought leaders, creators, scientists, entrepreneurs writers, all sorts of interesting people with the goal to bring you different perspectives you can use to enrich your mind and improve your life in whatever way you see fit. In this episode, I speak with author, speaker, and self-described science enthusiast, Idol Ahmed. You may know her from her massive social media presence on Instagram and Twitter, where she shares a lot of inspiring and uplifting messages. I've followed her on Instagram for a long time. Um, she goes by the name Idillionaire on her various platforms, so that might ring a bell for some of you. And actually, that's where Idol and I first connected a few years back was Instagram, and we've supported each other on our respective journeys ever since. I'm a, uh, a big fan of her mission to raise global consciousness, and I shared her writings on my page many times over the years. And she recently wrote a, a new and long-awaited book called Manifest Now, and it's all about guiding you through the mental, physical, and spiritual aspects of creating the life you want. And in this conversation, I just wanted to talk with her about some of the main principles and ideas in, in that book. So some of the questions and topics that we cover in this episode include things like what manifestation is exactly. I ask her um, is if there's a difference between manifesting and achieving, which is something that I've kind of always wondered, and she clears that up pretty well. I also ask her about balancing the trust your vision and not worrying about the how philosophy with actually taking practical steps toward your goals. She also outlines four key principles to effectively manifesting what we want, and I think a lot of you will find that part really meaty and useful. Um, I also asked her about the role of affirmations and mindfulness when it comes to manifesting. And then toward the end, we cover the topic of information overwhelm and how she deals with that. And I also share some important uh, mindset shifts that I've personally had recently, which I think and hope a lot of you will find useful. And actually, speaking of mindset shifts, I just wanted to let you all know that registration for the next Mindset Shifts Masterclass is open from September 3rd through September 10th. What is the Mindset Shifts Masterclass, you might ask? Well, that's a good question. Let me give you a little background here. So if you study human psychology long enough, you realize that the root cause of most of our negative emotions are certain stories and beliefs and assumptions that we've acquired throughout our lives. And these thoughts cause our perceptions to become distorted and lead us to act in ways that we don't really like. And so in order to find clarity and peace in our lives, it's really necessary to identify these mental patterns and either change them, reframe them, or replace them. And for years, I've been interested in the best ways to accomplish this. And it turns out there are a variety of different tools available including Stoic philosophy and cognitive behavioral therapy, which are two of my favorites. And this is where the Mindset Shifts Masterclass comes in. The Mindset Shifts Masterclass is a six-week course that I created 
that distills and simplifies many of these strategies that I've learned over the years from various different fields and philosophies. And it's really designed to help you let go of the stories that are holding you back, cultivate a mindset that helps you grow, and reprogram your mind for success. You can learn more about this course at MindsetShiftsMasterclass.com. And actually, if you want a taste of what the masterclass is all about before jumping right into it, you can feel free to try out my free mini course first. And you can find that on my website, thinkgrowprosper.com, and then just click on mini course in the navigation menu. And just a quick note, the free mini course is available all year round, but the masterclass only opens a few times a year. And registration for this masterclass closes on September 10th, 2018. So if you want to be notified when the next class opens up, you can go to MindsetShiftsMasterclass.com and sign up at the bottom of the page. Okay, and now without further delay, here's Idle. I'm excited to speak with you because I think we'll, we're going to cover some really interesting subjects here, but I also want to know about kind of more about your path. You've written a book recently, and I, I want to talk about that and some of the principles that you speak about. But I want to know, like, how did you get on this path to begin with? Like, how did you first become interested in the the topic of of manifesting, and and how did you start writing about it? You know, what were the first kind of books you read, and how did how did that evolve? Yeah. So initially, I would kind of go back to my childhood. I would say around you know, 11 to 12 years old. There was this like deep curiosity to understand the unseen world. And the unseen world really meant, you know, my own personal thoughts, um, the things that are happening around us, uh, what is moving everything, what is causing life to happen, you know, not really finding an answer, but really understanding myself. That's kind of what I came back to. And uh, I started going into, I mean, in high school, I was just that person who was like academically driven. I was very like curious. I was very excited about learning. You know, there was this deep desire for learning and expanding my mind. And it was such a personal thing. So it was never really a need for anybody to understand why I was like that. It was just a matter of me appreciating it and also accepting it because it was something that was there. And it was encouraged by my dad and, you know, in my household, it was always this mindset of like, you can do anything. And, you know, there was a lot of love being poured into me. And that was also something that helped me preserve my inner voice, which is what really guides us, you know, through the experience of life. So as I was continuously moving through my journey in college, I decided to study human biology and, it was when I was in the laboratory that I experienced that aha moment for me where it was see, seeing a cell divide, you know, looking at mitosis and meiosis under a microscope. It changes your perspective on just seeing every physical thing around you. You kind of go into the start and creation of things, you know, and there's so much more to it. But my curiosity was like, what is the energy that's moving the cell? What is moving everything? It wasn't really like, okay, I'm looking at a cell division. Um, let me study this for my exam. You know, it was really like, hold on, like what is happening? It was almost like the whole lab just stopped. And like, I was, I was sitting there just feeling like my curiosity was further expanding. And science was really a big part of that for me initially, you know, and because it fed my curiosity on understanding myself even further, which I started in the physical, as far as biology goes, it wasn't really just to know every single organ or anything like that it was really just to be like look at the magical like dance between things on a molecular level and then seeing it from that place really enriched my thought so it made me um have more of a a connection to the subtleties of life really not just like okay this is the physical aspect of things but really there was a deep yearning and appreciation for um what's not tangible what we can't see you know, the, 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 the unseen world. And that's where that curiosity led me to start to understand like my thought patterns, right? So going from the physical aspect and seeing things on a cellular molecular level, then I started thinking, okay, 
where does my thoughts stem from? Or how much of my own awareness is directing all my experiences? You know, so I just was sitting down somewhere and having these thoughts. Like it wasn't just, initially I didn't start off with reading. I feel like reading kind of helped me make sense out of it. Because <laughs> looking back, it was just more about where is it starting from? Like, where does everything come from? And I think the curiosity got to that point. And then I discovered um, one of my favorite books. And I, I, read a lot of, I read a lot of biographies and also um, philosophy. And one of my favorite books is Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. And I just love the sense of like, you know, it gives you a feel that don't take things too seriously. You know, it gives you this feel that there's so much more to who you are. Like it just, I feel like I go into a sudden calmness when I read meditations and sometimes I actually even cry because it's so much full of this emotion that brings you back to your spirit, you know? And I think that's what we forget sometimes, you know, we get so caught up in the physical reality of things and the structures and the things that we have to do. We forget this, this ever presence mind it's ever present spirit and part of ourselves that really is more that gives life to us and that makes life more colorful so it kind of that book was like one of my um early on uh guidance and it kind of made sense out of the things that i was thinking it was like wow like this is what i'm feeling this is what i'm thinking so books were almost a reassurance and it was like a comfort comfort for me um, because I was having all these thoughts, I was feeling all of these emotions and I could, I would have try to have a conversation with my parents and they would just be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> That's where my reading, my, my thirst for reading even began because it was almost like I had mentors and I had like connections to, to these authors that were having these profound thoughts. And I was able to create and experience a mentor through that. You know, that's why reading is really, really, really important. And Rene Descartes for meditations on the first philosophy was also a really good book that I loved. And, um, and also I enjoyed reading a uh, biography on Tesla and Einstein, just because of the fact that they were free thinkers and people that were just wanted to move humanity forward, but also from a spiritual energy perspective, you know, and then bring it into the physical. I think there needs to be a balance between both aspects. What you just pointed out, that little detail, I think is so true. I think the big thinkers and the people who have really changed the world in, in uh, profound ways, they really look at not just a myopic perspective of, of the world, you know, not just the physical. It's like, you know, how does this all fit together, the interconnectedness of everything? And, and I feel like mm -hmm. that, you know, that's Tesla, that's an Einstein, you know, mm -hmm. and um, that's an important quality. And it just seems like that that kind of paralleled your journey a, a bit when you were kind of drawn to the physical world with, with science. And then that kind of really expanded your mind and made you see the bigger picture and the interconnectedness of, of everything. Yeah, it gave a real deep appreciation just even going into um, – subjects such as physics and quantum mechanics, um, it gives you a connection, interconnection between everything and how, you know, the observer is affecting everything observed and, you know, back and forth with just with how we interact with our thoughts. And that's, there's a lot of science behind all of this, you know, but most of the times people assume that there's a disconnection between science and spirituality and, um, there's no correlation somehow, but if you're in it and you actually do read the research or you are in the laboratories, you'll start to see that, you know what, there is a really strong correlation between everything. Everything is interconnected. And that's the message. And what I've experienced with my journey initial, initially uh, starting with my with my lab work and understanding what I was doing there, but then the curiosity was always there. And that's what pushed me forward to understand myself. So that was kind of like the foundation, I would say. And then I moved into now doing what would be considered the self-work. So I would sit there and I would have a particular thought and then I would hold that thought and, and like believe in it. You know, I'll just be like, this is what I want to experience. So what would happen is the thought would manifest itself in ways that you could not even describe initially when you first thought of it, you know? So it would happen. And that's when I started to realize the power of my mind. You know, that's what I said, you know what, like, okay, we have something here. 
Yeah. So, so this is something that you just kind of came across on your own because you said that reading was kind of secondary for you and that you, your, your first entry point into the world of, as you say, the unseen was kind of your observation. And so was this something that you came across on your own? Like the, the, the connection between thoughts and your, your reality, the creation of your reality? Yes. Um, because like I, going back to like what I said early on, there is this inner voice, there's this inner guidance that we have, right? And if that's not nurtured at an early age, and that's not like preserved, what happens is you go through life trying to learn it, uh, unlearn things, and then go back to learning that voice, you know? Yeah. And for me, what happened was so many experiences, you know, with my parents, where my voice was empowered. It was like, what you say matters, what you think matters, how you feel matters. And w- this happened like at 10, 11 years old. So at that time, you're going to feel like, okay, hold on. Like I have so much to say. I have so much to share. And those are, that's your inner, that's your inner guidance, right? So these things are always coming up to me. I mean, c- uh, coming up from within. And then these, these thoughts would come to my mind where it would be very complex as far as like, okay, how, how does this work? And, you know, I would ask myself that and then I would process it. And then this is, this is kind of like the way that I was guided. It wasn't, um, like I said, it was preserving that. And I think we all have that voice, but it's just like so much of, you know, so many no's and so many doubts and so many fears have kind of like silenced that, you know, because once you, once your voice is clear, your inner voice, that, that guidance, what happens to you is that you start to tell yourself like, okay, how do I, you could create my, I can create my reality. And that's, that's part of the guidance. It's like, you're, you're, you're being, you're experiencing that. It's like this, it's, it's an interesting concept. But once I had the thought that it was like, you know what, like pay attention, sit back and really pay attention to how things even happen. Mm -hmm. So I spent time just observing, you know, I wasn't in a rush to create anything. I wasn't like, I want to manifest this. I was just like, okay, let me pay attention to how my thoughts are making me feel. First of all, yeah. And then the second step was how are my thoughts affecting the environment? And then then once that started happening, I started like aligning with um I started having the experiences where everything was happening, but then I I was kind of like oh this is a lot, you know, it was like over it was kind of overwhelming cuz it was happening so fast and I wanted to make sense out of it, you know, and I think the next step for me was that's when I started even getting into books that um that kind of, like I said, I was using it as, as a guide to what I was experiencing and other people were also thinking the same thing or who were going through the same stuff. So that's also when I came up on, um, the untethered soul, you know, I, and, and mm. where I was like, wow, this book conveys what I've been experiencing, you know, and what I've been going through for so long. And it just simplifies it. And there's a lot of different books that have done that, but the whole point is really, it goes back to you stepping back and really observing yourself. What are your habits? What are your thought patterns? What are your emotions? And I was doing that for so long, but I never understood it as manifestation. Like I didn't use those words, you know? I just thought I was thinking stuff and it was happening. I think that's so interesting. And and I actually want to talk about manifestation and and expand on that a little bit more because for let's say for those who might not know and who aren't who aren't familiar with with this terminology or maybe just aren't in in the in the world of uh spirituality and manifesting and things like that what what do you mean when you talk about manifesting what exactly are you are you talking about for me manifesting is the ability to create to attract and turn a consciously intended vision into a reality so it's consciously intending what you want to experience it's not a matter of things are just happening unco- like you know everything's random right because i went through that phase where i had to confront my own self with my own thoughts where i was just doing things unconsciously where it was everything was just i don't know like things are just happening i'm just going with the flow of life you know and there was really no f- structure at that time there was no um, direction, right? Because my mind was just going with the flow of whatever I heard, whatever I was told. But when I started to hone in and understand that I have the ability to attract, create, and turn a consciously intended idea and vision into a reality, that's when things started to change. Because I sat back, stepped back from things and said, 
what do I want to create? What do I want to experience? You know, and this goes back to the principles that I have for myself when it comes to manifesting what I want is you have to, first of all, know what you want. And a lot of the times when I talk to people and I say to them, what do you want? They automatically get frazzled. They're like, what do you mean? What are you talking about? I don't know. (laughs) You know, there is no clear intention on what is it that they want? What if you had access right now to anything and everything that your heart desires, what would that be? Without worrying about the how, without thinking about when, without, you know, having all of these other thoughts of like, oh, it's not happening or possible for me. What would that be like? And that already automatically shows me if someone is a lot easily allowing to let themselves go. But if they start to say, well, hold on, I, I don't know if I can get that or I don't know if I think about it, that already, cl- that already, you know, clouds the mind. So you want to make sure that you have a clear vision. And you, you talk about that a lot. You talk in your book, you talk about like not burdening your mind with the details of how it's going to happen. Why, why is that important? Because there were some people who might say, well, what about being practical? And what about like f- plotting out the steps I'm going to take to actually achieve this goal? Like how do those two philosophies reconcile? Yeah. I mean, there is a difference between taking the step, like having a plan for yourself, right? But the how that I'm talking about is when you sit there and you say to yourself, I'm going to manifest, um, you know, this great career, right? Or this great Mm -hmm. opportunity or job that you, or somewhere that you want to, something that you want to be a part of that seems like it's really big in your mind, right? How can you sit there and say to yourself, I'm going to get from here to hear most of what what's happening in life really from my personal experience, because I'm going to speak about personal experience, right? I've spoken where I wanted to work with somebody and I just said to myself, like, Oh, I want to work with this person. I don't know how it's going to happen. You know, like, I don't know how I'm going to get there. Right. I was looking for somebody to work with, um, with me on a project. And I remember just thinking about, okay, how do I find the person that's the most compatible, right? So those are the lists that you write out. What is it that, what is it that you want is also a part of the plan, right? So when you write out the, yeah. write down the list, this is what I want. This is exactly the detail, right? So next thing you know, I just go out hiking and I went, just run more, I went for a run, right? You know, running on the beach. And then I go to uh, the supermarket and I'm just standing in there and this girl comes up to me. And she's like, hi, aren't you, you know, Idol Ahmed? And then I was like, yeah, this is weird. (laughs) (laughs) She's like, you know, like, I really, I love what you're doing and I would love to work with you. This just happened in a store out of the intention I said in the morning or that day. But tell me, this girl matched everything I was looking for and wanted to, (laughs) I mean, for detail, right? So how can I sit there and make that plan? Right, right. Well, I had a similar experience with my my wife, actually, before I even met her years before. I was actually in another relationship and <laughs> it wasn't going so well, obviously, because I wrote down during that time, I wrote down a list of all the things I wanted in a partner. And I've shared this on my Instagram before and on my blog, but in detail, you know, everything. It was like a list of, I don't know, maybe 30, 40 different things, qualities, characteristics, attributes, and I kind of forgot about it. I kind of, I put that list away. I have many journals. So this was like lost in a journal somewhere, right? But then at some point, you know, obviously I I had met um, Vanessa, who was my girlfriend at the time. And we were just moving out of our first apartment and we were packing up all the boxes. And I, I came across that journal that I wrote all that list in. And it literally described her to a T. I had forgotten about this list and there it was staring us both in the face. And she's like, who who is this list about? I'm like, well, it's obviously about you. (laughs) And so that was pretty shocking to me. And I mean, it's pretty amazing actually. Um, but, But I can totally relate to that. One question I had as you were talking, is manifesting fundamentally different from achieving in any way? Is there any distinction there or are they synonyms? There are exactly the same, you know, because at the end of the day, you have a goal. Got it. You know, you have a vision, you have, you have a goal, you have a vision and there's somewhere, there's a direction where you're headed. And I think sometimes words make things seem so different. 
You know, I think we hear manifesting and then it's like action. Let's take the action. Let's go get this done. You're still using the same energy. You have an intention and you're headed towards it, you know? And I think sometimes it could, I'm very careful with words, even through my writing. I'm very particular about the words that I use, but I'm also open to allowing people to interpret the words as their own because it gives them the freedom to relate to it without feeling like, okay, you know, this is something I don't understand. And that's the most important part about manifesting, achieving, creating, designing, Um, you know, any word that you use at the end of the day, you're using one thing, which is energy. And it's very simple. And I think simplification of thought, it's the most important way to convey messages to as many people as possible. At the end of the day, it's honing in, getting back to that center within your own mind and saying to yourself, okay, what is it that I want? Yeah, I love that. And and you mentioned that, what is it that I want, clarifying your vision as I think a, like a, I would say a key principle to manifesting. What would you say if you had to pick like two to four, just a few key principles to manifesting that, that people can implement immediately, some core principles, what, what are those? I would say first thing first, knowing exactly what you want. Have that clear vision. It doesn't matter how big it is. It doesn't matter how scary it seems. It, it doesn't matter if nobody else understands it. That is the most important thing. It's going into a space with only yourself and say, and getting very clear. And this is what I talk about in my book is setting clear intention on what you want. Second thing is believing in it because you're in a state right now at this moment where you've designed your current experiences from past thoughts. So if you're going to enter something new, there's things you have to change. And that's going to take you to believe in it because you're walking into that. You're going into it. It's happening for you, but it's like, I have the vision. I know what I want. I'm going to believe in it. While there's doubts coming up, because the doubts have been with you every single day besides that day when you intended your vision. So for you to remove the doubt is a part of overcoming a habit. It's not a matter of, okay, I'm scared of the vision. It's not the vision that's that you're scared of. It's the fact that the doubt is wants you to conform to what you've always been doing, is staying the same. Yeah, and, and that, that that I feel like intersects with your beliefs, kind of your core beliefs about yourself and about how yes. you operate. Yes, and I and I do believe um, those are the those are the challenges you face when you start to speak like and say, you know what, this is what I want, and this is what I've intended, this is what I believe in, right? And I do talk about a lot more about that in, in the book in detail. So the, also step three is feel and visualize it to be true for you. It's not something that you think it's going to happen in the future, in the distance. It's true for you in this moment. You feel it, and that's where also the action comes in. Because when you sit there and say to yourself, I'm going to change today and this is my new vision that I have, you cannot do what you were doing yesterday. So action is a fundamental part of the the visualization process. Yes. Action is very important because every time I would receive a thought, every time I would have a thought, it would almost be like um, a guidance or you would be like, you tell yourself, okay, this is the next step that I'm going to take. Right. And I always love to use the example of like going to the gym. And it's the same way, you know, you have to train your mind. When you are in the gym, you don't sit there and say, today I'm going to get to my goal weight as soon as you go to the gym. You sit there and say to yourself, okay, this is my vision. You visualize your workout. Exactly. You you visualize the end goal and the action is you sitting there getting to your goal because you're sitting there and saying, the visualizing helps you stay motivated, it helps you stay, keeps that vision so clear that now you step into it. But then what happens is on the mental level, people don't treat it like the way they do the physical body. What they do is they, they sit there and they say, I'm going to, I'm going to have, I'm going to be positive today. Right. Right. But then what happens is you have to be active in your positivity. You have to be active in your change. Right. Because if you don't go to the gym, if you go to, if you don't go to the gym today, you're going to not feel the same way that you would feel if you went three to four times a week or if you were focused on getting to that vision. But then you're not also looking and saying, okay, why am I not at my goal weight today? Or like, why am I not my results today? Or like, why am I not there within a week? Right? So there is a gestation period and there is that timeline where things are happening for you, but you just have to continuously go on and on and you have to keep speaking these things and power over your life, which goes back to visualizing it to be true for you and taking the necessary action. 
And lastly, I would say from one of the principles that I truly believe in is trusting the process by using affirmations and positive thoughts. This is where you keep yourself going. Yeah, that's something that I wanted to ask you about also because you give a bunch of affirmations in the book and I love them because they're really precisely worded. And I think a misconception people have about affirmations sometimes is that they can be just like rote words that you repeat and and that they're not really having any effect. For those who don't understand affirmations, can you explain what they are? Like what's their purpose and how do they actually fit in here and how do they help you? For me, affirmations is the power of words. So if I'm speaking, I'm not just speaking like today is a good day. No, today is a great day. Like you you have to add strong emotion with your words. Words are powerful, right? But every time that I speak a word, that's it. Like, there's no such thing as, okay, maybe it's going to happen for me. I mean, there's so much research behind the power of words and are even speaking. You just see how, imagine how, when you say certain things to the people you love, right? You say, I love you so much. I care about you. How much they change. Their heart opens. They're just, they're just beautiful. And then sometimes you, some people use negative words and they speak, you know, negativity on people. And then what happens, that person feels like, you know, they're, they're, constrained and they feel kind of down because those words, words have an effect, right? Yeah. So if you're speaking, why not speak power into your life? Use affirmations. Affirmations are repetition, words that are repeated constantly that agree and align with the vision that you have. And this is why it's, I had to add a hundred affirmations in the book and also explaining, you know, explaining in depth what those affirmations support because I live by them and I use them and it, and even just even speaking about them I'm energized you know just thinking about <laughs> the power of I'm I'm so energized right now <laughs> I can tell <laughs> just speaking because there's so much passion in it you know there's so much passion in words and and if we use them constructively and we use them consciously change starts to happen in our lives and I want every single person listening to this to know that your words are very, very powerful and to start speaking power over your life. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I talk about this in, in, in my masterclass too. And it's like, I found affirmations to be a useful way to reinforce and kind of solidify empowering beliefs even. So like you, you identify a negative belief, for instance, that you have and um, that's something that's causing you to act in a way or producing results that you don't like, then obviously the the ideal situation would be to find the opposing empowering belief that's going to cause you to flip that around and act in a way that, that you do like and produce results that you do like. But that empowering belief needs to be nurtured and cultivated and reinforced. And, and I've, I've found a, a key to doing that, a really effective strategy for that is is the affirmations, right? Like is actually just reaffirming that mm-hmm. to yourself, to the world, like constantly, because that, that I think the principle is that your mind is always listening to what you're saying. Your mind is always listening yes. to what you're telling yourself. And exactly. that's a very important concept to understand, I think. Yeah, it's it's one of the it's one of the most important as far as like my day to day life, every single time that you know, there's even one little thought that doesn't align with my vision. I start to affirm, you know, I start to speak and it just cancels it out. It's like, bye, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it just puts an X on that, you know, that thought that's trying to bring you down or trying to change your current state of feeling. Those things come up sometimes. And do you, do you affirm, do you say your affirmations out loud, like in front of a mirror or just by yourself or just in your head? Are there different ways to do it? When I've spoken them out loud, it's so powerful, you know, because you're saying the words, right? And I do have those moments and I do have moments where um, I just repeat them in my, you know, in my mind, like, and, but, but at the end of the day, like I said, it has to have the emotion behind it. It has to have that strong, like, you know, I am greatness. Like I feel. It has to mean something to you. It has to mean something to you. And this is why I said in my book, at the end of the affirmation, um, affirm it chapter, I talk about how you can create your own affirmations and while using those words to guide you and say, you know what, when I read this part, 
in the book, it did resonate with um, how I feel. So if those made you feel good, take those words and repeat them to yourself. Because it's not just saying I am happy. You know, it's like, I am happy. I feel so good. And there are certain ways of writing. And that's something that I've learned how to do for myself is that I've started writing in ways where the words carry an emotion. So it's a feeling, strong feeling behind it. Always energize your words. Don't just sit there and read the word and not yeah. feel it. Feel those words as if it's happening to you. And that's how you'll start to notice change with affirmation. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think that's a, a key part of it is that you really need to have meaning behind the words. And and the sentences that you're speaking really have to mean something to you, even if they're weird sentences. Like I write things down in my in my notes sometimes. And, and I word them to myself differently than I might word them if I was speaking um, in public or sp- speaking to, to somebody or writing on my blog or something. And I don't know why that is, but I think it's because it's because it's more meaningful to me. Like we, ha- we have a language in our heads that's a little more meaningful than an eloquent sentence maybe. And so that for me has really locked it in. That's, that's totally true. I was going to ask you, because you talk about mindfulness also, and I think that's a really interesting concept. What What is mindfulness and how does it kind of intersect with these with this philosophy of, of, of manifesting? I would say being aware of the thoughts that you're having, you know, being mindful, it's you're also being consciously aware. You're not just thinking allowing the you know the cycle of habitual thoughts to keep playing what happens is you just get yourself into a center you center yourself and you bring yourself to that place where you are aware of everything that you're saying and doing that's that's what mindfulness is for me and i and sometimes i just relax and bring myself to a center where i just allow myself to be without having to have a reason for everything, to do everything. I just allow myself to completely be, and it brings me back to the center and and it makes a lot of the thoughts that I have much more clear. And that's the experience that I've had with it is to be as present as possible and to be conscious of the thoughts that you're having and the emotions that you're feeling, you know, just it's, it's going to be something you work on and then it gets easier as you continuously, you know, as you practice and keep going but initially, it's just a matter of saying, you know what, I'm not going to just react to every single thought I'm having. I'm actually just going to be mindful of everything that I think and the feeling that I have with it. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's so important. And it, it's actually, uh, it's, it's kind of a revolutionary concept to be observant of your thoughts. Like when I first read that, I know you mentioned the the Untethered Soul was a, was a, was a big book for you, kind of an entry point into this world. For me, it was books like um, the power of now and um, a new earth by Eckhart oh, yeah. Tolle, you know, mm-hmm. and that was the first time I had really heard someone talk about like observing your thoughts, being being the watcher of your thoughts, you know, and that for me was like a really interesting idea, and it, it's something that is <laughs> fundamental. It's kind of like this overarching principle um, for kind of inner peace and just. Uh, sanity, really, because a lot of us don't know we're thinking, right? The, the, the idea behind this is that a lot of us don't know that we're having all these thoughts and m- this mental chatter. And, and in fact, a lot of it is destructive. And so if we're able to stop and identify the things that are destructive and, and really all of it, then we're able to separate ourselves from those thoughts, which aren't necessarily a part of, of who we are. But I guess something that, that I, I would I would like to hear your thoughts on is that, that's all well and good, you know, identifying the thoughts. Sometimes I even I have found it to be difficult to identify my thoughts. Like I'll just have an emotion, right? I'll just have like I'll feel a certain emotion. You know, what thought is causing this emotion? Because emotions follow thoughts, right? And so how do you how do you practice this? Like, how do you practice mindfulness and being observant, being the observer of your thoughts? I think it goes back to the fact. I mean, for me, I would say is not the way I do it. Is if a feeling comes up that's like that I might not resonate with, I'm not going to go look for where the feeling came mm. from. You know, I'm going to start speaking the words that I want. I'm going to start speaking the thoughts that I want. And then what happens is, is like it's not that you're 
avoiding or you're not dealing with it. Because a lot of people just say you need to face your thoughts and stuff like that. But really what happens is these are these are streams of thoughts that sometimes come in and it might not resonate with how it, it might make you feel a certain way. But what happens is it also doesn't last that long. Mm. Usually it just goes away like after a while, right? But while it is there, I start to affirm the new way of thinking, the new feelings that I want to have, the new thoughts that I want to entertain that is opposite of that particular feeling or thought. And what happens is that it it empowers it. It empowers you because most of the time what I realize with the conversation that I've had with people is they'll start to identify with those thoughts and the feelings that come and then suddenly their whole day is ruined. They're just like, I'm not in the mood today because of that feeling. Yeah. You know, I'm not feeling, I'm not, today is going to be a bad day because I had one thought that came in that didn't resonate with right. me. So you want to make sure that you're not infect. I mean, you're not affected by the external world so much that left and right, you know, you're like, your, your emotions are going one way. You're, you know, you're just all over the place. So this goes back to mindfulness. This also goes back to the fact that you could sit there and if those feelings come up, if those thoughts come up, right? You have to make peace with it. It's not even being scared of it. It's not saying like, oh, I'm so scared. Why is it coming up? I'm such a positive person. I'm so positive. Why are these thoughts coming up to me? You know, I don't, I'm not scared of anything. Like I'm not, I'm not trying to avoid thoughts. I'm not trying to avoid feelings, right? These things are natural. They happen, right? But we have to be ready. And, And to be ready is for you to speak the words that are so powerful over your life, right? It's not a matter of hiding and saying, okay, you know what? I'm doing good today. Why is, okay, well, I've been doing so good this week. Why is today this way? And that's what I think what happens to people where judgment comes from. And they start to like, feel like, okay, they're not doing the self work properly. No, it's okay that that feeling came up. Like I'm actually fine with it. I'm I'm fine with those thoughts coming up and those feelings coming up. But what I am going to do is use the power of my words, use the power of my thoughts to cancel them out. That's a good point. Yeah, that's a that's a useful way to look at it. And I think it's also a really useful thing to point out what you just did was that like don't beat yourself up if you're if you have a negative thought or whatever. Like these things happen and you're human because by doing that, you're compounding the problem, right? Like you're adding fuel to the fire and like Eckhart Tolle says, what you resist persists. And so if you're fighting against it and like, oh no, damn it, damn it. I shouldn't have had that thought. Well, now you're having negative thoughts about your negative thoughts. Exactly. (laughs) it's like, where does it stop? Exactly. And I'm so passionate about telling people that it's okay and that you are forgiven and that it is fine, right? Because it's, it's coming back to your center all the time. You know, it's not it's not beating yourself up over mistakes. It's not going backwards and analyzing and criticizing. No, it's you right now as a person are completely fine. You know, the thoughts, all of these things just allow them to be released. Mm -hmm. This is why I even talked about release. I have the chapter on release it in the book where I focus on, like I'm all about forgiveness. I'm all about self-forgiveness. I'm all I speak that all the time because I'm always forgiving myself every single day. Yeah. Even if I have a thought that doesn't align with my vision or you know whatever patterns I'm in, I always say to myself, I forgive myself. I love myself. You know, um, okay, that thought came, but I am so much more powerful than that thought. Yeah. You know, I speak, you know, it's sometimes it's just it's so much emotion behind it that I even get tears in my eyes because you cannot sit there and allow yourself to be, you know, to be lessened, you know, within your own mind, right? Because this is just all happening in your head. So you bring yourself to that place with self-forgiveness and say, these thoughts are not me. I'm not going to be, you know, controlled by it and react emotionally and you know what, actually, I'm going to step back from it and, and, and empower myself with new thoughts, new, new words, new emotions, and also forgive myself. Yeah. Right. And I do talk so much about forgiveness, self-forgiveness, creating a better relationship with the people in your life in the book, just because of the fact that we do, not only are you dealing with your own thoughts, you're dealing with other people too. Yeah. And, and 
And actually, speaking of, of writing and reading and, and learning and consuming information, just in general, I want to switch gears here just a little bit because as we were talking about kind of before this, this conversation, we were, we were chatting and we were talking about information overwhelm. And I, I was saying that I sometimes, like if I read too much and if I consume too much information, even if it's good information, like... My, I'm a very curious person and sometimes my curiosity will get away from me and kind of turn on me in a sense because then I'll become overwhelmed by all these ideas, all these concepts, all these things, social media, whatever it is. Um, and temperamentally, I'm a little bit predisposed to that anyway, to like kind of overstimulation. So I, I'm just wondering, like, I know you're a avid learner and you read a bunch too and um, you're just as curious. I'm just wondering if you have any thoughts on the idea of information overwhelm and yeah, just anything along those lines. Yeah. I've, I mean, I've experienced that where I'm just like, there's too much going on as far as like with information, whether, cause I read a lot of um, research papers too. And I have to like be picky about, you know, because everybody, everyone's always recommending a book to me too. It's like read this book, read this book, and I'm just like, hold on, like, <laughs> <laughs> there's too much going on. So I decide what like I'm gonna look for, what I'm gonna read. So initially, what was happening was I was just reading everything. Like I would read, uh, you know, one book a week or something like that. Or I would look, I would because I read a lot of research paper again. Like so, I'm looking at what the latest research is or what's going on. And those articles are a lot of information as well. But most of the information overload that I experience sometimes is through social media. And, you know, because you go on there and it's like something is in your face that you might not intend yeah. to see. Right? <laughs> so, you know, with Twitter and everything like that, there's so much. So I try to um, be conscious of what I look at and the things that I consume. So instead of making, instead of like, taking every single book that I feel like it's interesting, I handpick what I want to focus on and also take the time to take the action and what you learn. Mm. I don't want to read 1000 books and sit there and say to myself, okay, I'm just going to keep looking for the yeah. next book. Yeah. Right. But I need to, that's when I realized, and I think I talked about it in my book club where I was telling people, it's not about the next book guys. Like it's about taking what you've learned in this particular book, applying it, getting the results and then see how you feel after that. Yes. You know? So I think there's this like, I think, I think there's also this like thirst where people are looking. There's this like curiosity of like, I need information, information. But at the same time, you're just almost, it's almost an escape to not, you're not using it. You're not doing anything about exactly. it. Exactly. So I'm looking at it as a, it's an escape because you're like, if you're asking me top 10 books that I've read, it's like, okay, what book have you read and have you applied? You know, that's how I look. That's how I'm really starting to look at things because I'm not going to read another book until I've fully applied everything that I've learned. That's how I'm looking at it because if you're just reading information, that's where the overload can come. Yes, that is that is a very powerful point, I think. It's like use the information, right? It, I, I've written about this too. You know, you may have already come across the one idea that could have changed your life if you had just taken the time to apply it and savor it, you know, and really embrace it and integrate it into your life in a way. But but instead, you're on to the next new information, the next new book, the next big idea, you know, exactly. when you're not taking the time to savor the the previous one. And I mean, that's all, that's a note to myself that that I've written and and what you just said, yes. those those strategies that you just said. Um, are, are things that have helped me for sure. It's like, yeah, be intentional about what you want to consume. That, that's something that was a big mindset shift for me because it's very easy to just want to consume everything, but have a purpose for what it is you want to consume, right? Like have a purpose in mind. And something else that has given me some freedom actually in my in my learning is I used to think that I could only read a book from front to back linearly like from beginning to end. And now I just given myself the freedom to look at a book and be like, okay, well, what do I think this book's about? Okay. What, what, what do I know about the author? And then kind of look at the table of contents and then see what interests me, see what part of the book interests me. Cause maybe the whole book doesn't interest me, you know, and, and maybe that's information that's just going to cloud up my, my memory a little bit, you know? And so I've just given myself the freedom to jump in and and only read things that interest me. And if I and if 
once I'm done, just stop. I don't have to read the entire book. And that has helped me a lot too, I think. Yeah, those are really important points that you've also made. And like I said, it could be a form of escape because you don't have to take exactly. action because it's, I think you could get, you can get very excited mentally and be like, wow, like the dream and the vision of who I could potentially be. Okay. Let me find right. the next book. You know what I mean? So it, you could go into this fantasy world within your mind where it's so exciting. I mean, you do change how you see things the more you read, but you could even have a greater impact onto your reality, onto yourself. The minute you say, you know what, I'm so thankful for these principles in this book. I'm so thankful for every single thing that I've read. Let me apply just one aspect of it and see what happens. Totally. Totally agree with that. You know, then you're going to change and then you're going to start to realize you're, you're learning new things, but each thing that you learn, you already know you're going to apply it. You're not just like reading and gathering information. Everything I search for has an intention. Everything that I, that I find there's a purpose for. It's not a matter of like, okay, send me articles, send me papers, and I'm just going to review everything, look at it. I'm just going to be very precise about what I consume. You don't want to consume information just for the sake of consuming information, right? You want to have a purpose. And then also, I found it helpful to revisit information and solidify it and basically build a framework, like a tree of knowledge in my mind, so that when I can, when I encounter related information, I can kind of hang it on that tree of knowledge that's in my mind. And it kind of has a cubby hole um, where it can reside, as opposed to just forgetting everything and starting from scratch each time I read a new book. So it is important. Um, I, I want to ask you, in, like, what inspired you to write your book? Because you, you, have, you have the new book, Manifest Now. I love it. I think it's very actionable and also just very simple, very straightforward, very easy to understand and very digestible. Um, it's it, a lot of it is like in, in list format. And I think that's so easy to consume and so powerful actually. But, but I'm wondering like what gave birth to this book and why did you write it? I, well, initially when I started manifesting, creating what I want, seeing things happen the way they were happening. Right. And I was like, you know, I was like, trying the principles that I wrote in the book. And I was actually, I was using it for a while. You know, I was, I still use it till today. And what I did was I would guess the results that I was intending and what I was speaking. And I started just tweeting about it, just kind of tweeting like my ideas on manifesting and telling people. And then I was on Instagram, just sharing the, you know, the posts about it. And then on my website, so I was, you know, just putting it out there, speaking on it and just kind of like writing about it and then, but also seeing how it was influencing and affecting my life. So, and so many people always asking me, when are you going to write a book? Like, you know, and I sat there and I thought to myself, what is, what do I want to share with people that's going to get them going today? You know, what's going to get them moving now where they can start to take the power back, which is their thought patterns, their, how they feel about themselves, self-forgiveness, you know, creating what they want. And this is where Manifest Now came from. It was a concept of just putting together a book that I feel like could be useful for the everyday person who is not really sure about what manifestation is or who really does know about manifesting, but really have, haven't used any practical steps or techniques that could help them. I just wrote it in a way where you, once you read it, you get a clear understanding of what manifestation is. You start to understand what is even holding you back, what is hindering you. And it's kind of like confronting yourself because that's the most important part is being honest with who you are and say to yourself, like, you know what, actually I have been using my time and my energy doing things that do not resonate with my vision and my goal. So how can I change that? And then I walk them through, um, steps on how to kind of release all of this, you know, thoughts that are or emotions or the past that's built up that you haven't probably forgiven yourself for. And then walking them through the steps of thinking it, which means the section called think it is like, these are greater thoughts that I'm going to entertain. And then allowing yourself to even write some of your own. And then finally affirm it, which helps you keep the, you know, the words, keep yourself aligned to the purpose and the goals that you have. 
and also the magnetic uh, money mindset, the last chapter. And that one really is about creativity because so many people just want to be successful, but really they're, they're not even going back into themselves to realize like, what do I have to offer to the world? Who am I? Like, what do I, what is my talent? What is my passion? What am I into? And that chapter really is redefining what success is for, you know, cause everybody's just so focused on like, I want to, I want to make a lot of money, you know, like I want to make so much money. I, I, I want to know how I could get out from this mindset. And it's like, it teaches you what abundance is and abundance is your natural birthright. And I did talk about that in that chapter. And I also talked about how to start discovering what you're good at, but also stop doubting your talents. You have talents and not treating your talent as a, as a hobby, you know, but really you could make it a lifestyle. It could be something you do, you know? So I walk people through that and really it's, it's a mixture between being very transparent with yourself, doing the self work and applying these techniques and these tools. But at the same time, realizing that there's so much more to us and there's so much more that, that we offer. And it inspires me to even just even talk about it because I realized that with my own self, I mean, like I, it's just, these things create so much emotion in me that it really just, it's like an joy. It's like, it's like high bliss (laughs) of joy and happiness to know, to know that we can change. It does not matter who you were yesterday or who you were last week. It doesn't matter what you've been through is the fact that today you have discovered this. And right in this moment, you have declared, I am ready to change. And that's what the book is about. It's helping you recreate, redesign and reimagine your whole life. And that's what I wrote Manifest Now is to help people get started. That is, I think, um, a beautiful answer and a perfect place to to leave this conversation. Idol, thank you so much for being here and sharing uh, your insights. I think a lot of people will find this very helpful and myself included. Where can people, where can people find you on social media and um, what, what other projects are are you up to? So you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, my website at idillionaire. My website is idillionaire.com. Everything is ideally in our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And I'm just working on some new projects. I'm so excited for it's going to help so many more people. It's going to be announced soon. I'm going to be launching it. So I'm excited for that as well. But for me, it's just now it's a matter of getting people going, getting people started, and every single individual taking their power back and harnessing their mental energy so they too can create the reality that they want. Idol, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ruben. Hey, thanks for listening to the Think Grow podcast. If you enjoyed this episode and find value in this podcast, I humbly ask you to please subscribe and or leave me a review on iTunes. Or you can just share it with a friend who you think might find value in it. If you've already done any of these, I want to take a moment to sincerely thank you. I truly, truly appreciate your support. Lastly, if you have any suggestions for future guests or topics you'd like to hear covered, you can email podcast at thinkgrowprosper.org. (laughs) 